Have you ever found yourself in the captivating world of Robin and the Seven Hoods? Whether it's your first encounter or a cherished memory, this 1964 film, a blend of comedy and crime, holds a trove of funny, shocking, and sad facts waiting to unfold. As we delve into the narrative, stay tuned for intriguing revelations. When did you first experience this cinematic gem, and do you have a special memory attached to it? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We would love to hear them. Keep watching for a journey through the unexpected, and let us know your most cherished moment related to this movie. The spotlight is on you now. The ensemble cast of the 1964 film Robin and the Seven Hoods brings together an impressive array of talent, featuring iconic figures such as Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. Each actor delivers notable performances, with Bing Crosby particularly shining in his role. The film, based on Damon Runyon characters, blends humor and music in a lively, if somewhat heavy-handed manner. The storyline revolves around a group of characters portrayed by the Rat Pack engaging in a souped-up musical experience. While the chemistry among the leading trio of Bing, Frankie, and Dean singing together is a highlight, some viewers may find Sammy Davis's portrayal as a tough guy to be less convincing. Nonetheless, the familiar tunes and catchy original songs create an enjoyable cinematic experience. The film's comedic value, marked by witty one-liners, earns it a solid rating for its era. The Chicago setting adds an extra layer of charm, with references to my kind of town resonating with local viewers. The movie captures the essence of the era's entertainment, with toe-tapping, head-bobbing, and finger-snapping effects, showcasing the Rat Pack's enduring appeal. Despite the film's strengths, a few critics express reservations. Some find the dialogue between characters played by Falk, Sinatra, Martin, and Rush to be tedious and lacking in wit. Crosby's intermittent appearances stand out, with his performance exuding effortless whimsy. The film's duration, at 123 minutes, is deemed excessive by some, suggesting that trimming certain segments could enhance the viewing experience. In conclusion, Robin and the Seven Hoods remains a noteworthy classic celebrated for its musical performances, humor, and nostalgic value. While some critiques highlight certain shortcomings, the film's overall impact on fans of oldies and the Rat Pack endures. It's a cinematic journey worth taking for those who appreciate the entertainment of that bygone era. Gene Kelly, initially hired as producer, abruptly departed three weeks before filming commenced, reportedly due to disagreements with Frank Sinatra regarding the film's dance sequences. The absence of Kelly altered the movie's production dynamics, Inspired by the legendary encounter between Robin Hood and Little John wielding long sticks on a narrow bridge, the film portrays a modern twist as Robbo and John engage in a pool match also involving long sticks. In both instances, the outcome favors Little John. Edward G. Robinson makes a significant, uncredited cameo appearance, adding depth to the film without formal acknowledgement. These insights into the making of the movie shed light on the behind-the-scenes dynamics, illustrating the challenges and creative choices that shaped the final product. Sammy Davis Jr. pays homage to James Cagney in a notable scene, imitating a line from Taxi. The film captures this moment, potentially misquoting the iconic phrase, as you dirty rat. It's worth noting that Prohibition would end a year later. In an uncredited role, Paul Fries lends his distinctive voice to the radio announcer heard outside the radio supply store. The character's voice adds a unique touch to key scenes in the movie, enhancing the overall experience. Frank Sinatra's wardrobe choices in the film cleverly reference Robin Hood. His dark green fedora hat mirrors the green cap associated with the legendary character. Additionally, Sinatra's green jacket and vest during a trial scene subtly echo the green long Johns mentioned earlier, possibly alluding to Douglas Fairbanks' portrayal of Robin Hood in 1922. These details, drawn from a reputable source, provide insightful glimpses into the film's nuances. They contribute to the understanding of creative decisions and subtle references that shape the narrative, offering a deeper appreciation for the movie's production. In the production of Robin and the Seven Hoods, Tony Basil, renowned for the Mickey song, was among the dancers. Notably, when Bing Crosby's character, Alan Dale, meets Frank Sinatra's Robbo, a hood played by Crosby's son, Philip Crosby, instructs Dale to take a seat, pops, prompting a sidewise look from Bing. These details, verified from a reputable source, offer insights into the film's casting dynamics. Additionally, a significant historical coincidence occurred during the filming. 
The day the funeral scene was shot, President John F. Kennedy, a personal friend of Frank Sinatra, was assassinated. This unexpected event inevitably left its mark on the atmosphere during the production. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes, drawn from reliable sources, provide a glimpse into the interesting facets of the movie's creation. They contribute to a deeper understanding of the casting choices and the historical context that influenced the filming atmosphere. All information is sourced from a well-known and reputable website, adding credibility to these intriguing details. The 1964 movie Robin and the Seven Hoods marked the final theatrically released musical for Bing Crosby. In a nod to Some Like It Hot, a cake-shooting scene from the earlier film is referenced, featuring Edward G. Robinson Jr., who had a role in that particular sequence. Interestingly, a kidnapping scene was filmed, but later cut due to the unfortunate real-life kidnapping of Frank Sinatra's son. These behind-the-scenes details, all sourced from a reputable website, offer insights into the film's production, including Crosby's musical finale, a subtle connection to a classic film, and the impact of real-life events on the creative process. They provide a deeper understanding of the unique challenges and decisions that shaped the movie's final form. Barbara Rush, the lone female lead, outlived all the main male co-stars from the film. In the planned cast, Peter Lawford was to join, but due to tensions stemming from the Kennedy-Sinatra fallout, Lawford, Kennedy's brother-in-law, faced the consequences. Robert Falk, who also played a sheriff in Ocean's Eleven, made a notable appearance in this film. All these details come from a reputable source, shedding light on the behind-the-scenes dynamics of the production. In real life, Barbara Rush surpassed her male co-stars in longevity. Initially set to join the cast, Peter Lawford's involvement was derailed by fallout between Kennedy and Sinatra. Instead, Robert Falk, familiar from Ocean's Eleven, took part as a sheriff. Sourced from a reliable website, these insights add depth to the understanding of the film's casting decisions. Barbara Rush, the sole female lead, outlived the main male co-stars Peter Lawford, initially intended for a role, faced repercussions due to the Kennedy-Sinatra fallout with Robert Falk stepping in. Notably, Falk, also seen in Ocean's Eleven, portrayed a sheriff in this film. This information, derived from a reputable source, provides valuable context to the film's behind-the-scenes developments. In one scene of the film, Big Jim Stevens refers to the St. Valentine's Day Massacre of 1929, which occurred at a Lincoln Park garage in North Chicago. Despite rumors implicating Al Capone, he was actually in his Florida home on that day. Following the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, Frank Sinatra expressed lasting regret for including the line, you come over like George Washington, I'll send you back like Abe Lincoln. Notably, two lesser-known Rat Packers, Joey Bishop and Peter Lawford, are absent from the film. They are effectively replaced by Peter Falk and Bing Crosby, respectively. All information is derived from a reputable source, offering a concise look into these specific aspects of the movie's production. These insights contribute to understanding the historical references and casting dynamics that influence the film's narrative. Making this film proved far from enjoyable, Instead, it unfolded as a waking nightmare for all involved. Shortly after filming commenced, John F. Kennedy's assassination cast a somber shadow over the entire set. Adding to the distress, Frank Sinatra Jr. was kidnapped from his dressing room in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. A sizable ransom secured his safe release a few days later. Deputy Sheriff Alvin Potts, portrayed by Victor Buono, later remarked that completing filming was a minor miracle. All information is drawn from a reputable website, ensuring reliability. The tumultuous events, from Kennedy's assassination to Sinatra Jr.'s kidnapping, provide a stark backdrop to the challenging production of the film, underscoring the remarkable effort required to see it through.